I've spent years now studiously avoiding learning anything about the ongoing legal battle between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. I think it's disgusting. Um, and I don't think it's a fun peek into celebrity lives. Like I don't want to know. Unfortunately, I am an avid user of social media. And because of that, this has finally become completely and utterly unavoidable as they go into their last week of trial. This is thanks in part to the heroic efforts of far right media sources like the Daily Wire, who spent 35 to $47,000 buying ads on Facebook and Instagram, pushing the narrative that Amber Heard is committing character assassination by stating that Johnny Depp physically and verbally abused her throughout the several years of their relationship. While I can easily ignore Facebook ads from batshit conservatives, uh, and even hundreds of posts all over Reddit, um, it's harder when people I actually follow are talking about it and who um, consume this far-right narrative without question and then repeat it on my Twitter feed. Um, it's difficult seeing progressive influencers, you know, on Twitter and YouTube and TikTok and elsewhere pile on with absolutely terrible brainless takes. Like, seriously, who could have guessed that Lance Bass was going to go hog wild mocking a woman describing how her husband abused her? But the thing that finally convinced me to make a video about this was um, another video on YouTube. YouTube recommended I watch a video from Kiana Doherty called What About Amber Heard Seems So Fake?, as of this recording, that video has 64,000 views, more than 5,000 likes. And I want to talk about it because um, it represents a lot of what is wrong, even with moderate people's take on this trial. You know, it's pseudoscientific, and it completely ignores the misogynistic society that we live in. So let's talk about it. Uh, first, a brief overview of what this trial is about, in case you don't know. Back in 2018, Amber Heard wrote an opinion piece for the Washington Post in which she described herself as a public figure representing domestic abuse. The article does not mention Johnny Depp by name uh, or even describe any of the abuse. Regardless, Depp sued Heard for $50 million, claiming this was uh, defamation. Heard countersued for $100 million. This isn't the only lawsuit Depp has filed uh, against someone for calling him an abuser. In 2020, a case wrapped up uh, where he sued the UK tabloid The Sun for writing that Depp had abused Heard on several occasions. The UK is notoriously bad with libel cases, making it very easy for someone to launch one, like Depp did, and very difficult for the defendant to prove their innocence. However, in this case, the judge actually ruled in favor of the son, confirming that 12 of the 14 incidences of abuse that they described were true. Those incidents were as follows, and obviously content warning. In early 2013, Depp slapped Heard so hard she fell to the ground. In March of 2013, Depp hit Heard and gave her a bloody lip. In June of 2013, Depp threw glasses at Heard and ripped her dress. In May of 2014, Depp screamed at Heard and kicked her in the back. In 2014, Depp grabbed Heard by the hair, slapped her, and pushed her to the ground. In January of 2015, Depp slapped Heard and pushed her to the ground before standing over her and yelling. In March of 2015, Depp gave Heard a broken lip, a swollen nose, and cuts all over her body. He also pushed her to the ground, choked her, and spit in her face. In March of 2015, Depp grabbed Heard and hit her in front of her sister. In August of 2015, Depp grabbed Heard by the throat and pushed her into a wall. In December of 2015, Depp threw a glass decanter at Heard, slapped her, and dragged her through the apartment by her hair before hitting her in the back of the head and headbutting her in the face. Actually admits to doing this in a voice recording, but in the trial, he claimed that that was just an accident. He then allegedly pushed her face into a mattress and repeatedly punched her. In April of 2016, Depp assaulted Heard at her birthday party. And in May of 2016, Depp threw a phone at Heard's face. 
The judge found that he was able to adequately verify all of those accusations. Um, there were two additional accusations he could not verify. Those were Depp becoming violent towards Heard in 2014 and throwing her around a room in 2015. But the judge decided the 12 he could substantiate were enough to rule in favor of the son calling Depp a wife beater. Does that judge's ruling mean that those incidents happened exactly as Heard reported and exactly as the evidence suggests in the form of texts and witnesses? No. You know, judges make mistakes all the time. Uh, but I share that ruling here because, and this is very important, that judge had far more information available to him than you, me, or the random Pirates of the Caribbean fans on TikTok. So it's worth bearing it in mind. Depp denies committing any of this abuse. Um, and in his favor, he has a voice recording of Heard admitting to hitting him and saying that no one will believe him because he's a man. It's that recording that has led to the standard moderate take, which is that both of these people are abusers who abused one another, uh, which, if true, means that Depp should lose his defamation case in the United States, since abusing an abuser is still abuse. That said, many domestic violence experts point out that in cases where one person is repeatedly terrorized by an intimate partner over several years, it's common for them to try fighting back, uh, occasionally turning those abusive, abusive tactics back on their abuser. Is that what happened here? I don't know. I'm not an expert and I'm not involved in this case. And it would be, frankly, immoral of me to weigh in as though I am. Which brings me back to Kiana Doherty. On its face, her video appears to be an objective examination of why we think Amber Heard is lying about Johnny Depp abusing her. She doesn't come out and say Amber Heard is lying. Uh, that would be wrong. So instead, she spends 15 minutes detailing all of the things Amber Heard does that forces us to think she's lying, using uh, this air of scientific objectivity to suggest that our gut instinct is likely correct. Yes, she's lying and Johnny Depp is telling the truth. I'll include a link to Doherty's video if you'd like to watch it in full and know that I'm not misrepresenting it. But uh, here is a brief overview of her case against Heard. Uh, she says that Heard milks the red carpet more than any celebrity, uh, which, I mean, Bjork wore a swan on the red carpet once, but okay. Uh, she says Heard has attention-seeking behavior, which pretty sure Johnny Depp has that too. Like, does any professional actor not have attention-seeking behavior? Uh, she says Heard seems to constantly look to the jury for validation, or, you know, maybe Heard uh, knows that making eye contact engenders trust. So, you know, maybe she's doing that. Uh, Doherty says that Heard lacks authenticity, that she's a completely different person in every clip that Doherty cherry picks. She's very sweet in 2012 when she was 26. She's aggressive in clips from 2008 when she was 22. She poses when answering questions on the red carpet, like actors never do. Uh, she says that Heard does impression management, putting on a mask to make people like you. Uh, she says that Heard rarely owns up to unflattering moments. She points out that Heard seems so different in the recordings that Depp made of her while they were fighting. Uh, she says that she's uh, deceptive. She says her outfits are meant to convey respectability, but it feels more like a costume, while Johnny Depp's outfits feel authentic, like when he wears sunglasses inside of the courtroom. She says that Johnny Depp is the essence of authenticity. And okay, fucking seriously, this is so completely unhinged that I can't believe Doherty sat down and said this to a camera with a straight face. How does a grown-ass woman in the year of our Lord 2022 not realize that women are judged far more harshly than men for how they present themselves? She's wearing a fucking fitted black suit. If she showed up in sunglasses and a crop top and a wide-brimmed hat, would you be talking about how authentic she is? Or would you accuse her of not taking this court case seriously? 
Later on, Doherty has the complete lack of self-awareness to laud Johnny Depp for smirking and chuckling throughout the trial because that is a display of real emotion. But if her did that, she would have been excoriated. It's such an obvious double standard that I'm shocked Doherty didn't notice throughout the process of writing a script, recording a video, editing it, posting it. Like, how do you get that far? Um, like, remember that video I made last year about Zoom fatigue? Uh, there was a study, several studies, in fact, that found that just being on camera on a Zoom call was more tiring for women than for men because they are forced to spend extra time policing their own appearance because they know that they'll be judged more harshly by their coworkers because their coworkers are starting from the bias that they are less competent than their male peers. Yeah, this isn't This isn't some big secret, you know, women and black, indigenous people of color, um, marginalized groups are all playing a no win game when it comes to how society perceives them. Moving on, Doherty credits Depp with presenting the same personality going back 20 years. You know, why, why doesn't Amber Heard do that? Probably because she wasn't on the Ellen show at the age of 14. You know, she was too busy helping out in soup kitchens before school, according to her. I don't know. Uh, Doherty claims Heard has ulterior motives and then plays a clip of Heard admitting that she hasn't donated the money from her divorce as she said she would. Although the ACLU confirmed that they had established a timeline for her to do so, they had already received about a million dollars before she was sued by Depp, which she says sucked away all of the money. I don't know if that's true. Uh, Doherty then plays a clip of her visiting a Syrian refugee camp and says the authenticity of her actions are up for debate now that we know more about Heard's behavior, but Doherty doesn't bother to explain what behavior that is exactly that should make us doubt her motives for going and touring refugee camps. Literally, the only bad action she mentions in this video is Heard not donating another million dollars to charity. She then mocks Heard for being inarticulate when describing how touched she was by her visit to the refugee camp, uh, playing the final Jeopardy song under her rambling response. Two issues with this. Um, One, not everybody is articulate when speaking off the cuff, even famous actors. It, It doesn't make them liars. Secondly, this is cherry picking. Uh, She could have played the clip of Heard on stage at the Social Good Summit in 2018, where she describes how fulfilling she has found a lifetime of charity work, and particularly her current work with Amnesty International and the UN Human Rights Office. Hey guys, post-production Rebecca here. Sorry, but I just had to point out something that I missed when I first watched the clip that I'm about to play for you. But this is from four years ago. And I wanted to note that Amber Heard appears to be wearing the exact same suit that Doherty says made Heard inauthentic to wear in court. Amber Heard literally pulled a suit out of her existing wardrobe that she's been wearing at events for at least four years and got called inauthentic for wearing it in court. Incredible. Anyway, on to the clip. Yeah, this back there. <laughs> You're like, um, yeah. so I started. Uh, I guess I started volunteering when I was like 12 or something. Um, and it seems very, you know, oh, how lofty. But um, I was probably required to do so for school or something. Um, but this weird thing happened. I uh, started really loving it and not loving it uh, for a reason, especially uh, as a 12-year-old um, that my 12-year-old brain could could describe. I loved it because it gave me back something. Uh, And uh, I started volunteering at a soup kitchen before school because um, I didn't have time to do it any other time other than summers. So every morning before school, I started going there. And um, I I, I think it's when I got addicted to the the give back. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot about people and and, and really not what separates us, but really how similar we are. And uh, I moved to LA when I was young. I had no money, um, as all you know, uh, starving actors are when they first moved to LA, especially. So I looked for ways in which I could be involved, and um, and, and looked also at the resources I had. And having nothing um, but time, I wound up uh, finding uh, a way I could work for um, children children's hospitals or work with children in um, in children's hospitals. And um, I guess there, uh, I still do today. Um, I guess working in those hospitals for me has uh, has has really um, taught me um, the main component of 
service, which is humanity. The humans are you know, the core component of, of service. And I think that um, you know, has translated also into my uh, activism now. Um, now I have the opportunity uh, to go on missions, uh, as well as you know, raise attention, funds, uh, you know, support, advocate for um, various uh, causes and nonprofits. I have the ability to sometimes um, uh, you know, participate on these missions. Um, so many years ago, the, uh, I, you know, I accompanied Amnesty International um, on their research missions and humanitarian missions on the border, both on the north and south side of the border. Um, uh, to uh, translate for and to interview and to advocate for and to help um, the refugees and migrants um, uh, fleeing their um, their home countries uh, in, in, in in seek of uh, refugee I mean in seek of refuge um, and uh, and the sheer minor hope that they can make a better life for themselves. Here's a fun activity. Go read the comments on that video. It is a cesspit of misogynistic comments going back years all because Amber Heard had the audacity to take the stage to bring attention to the plight of Syrian refugees having trouble uh, accessing adequate medical care. Doherty admits that despite all of these objective points against Amber Heard, uh, Heard might be telling the truth. But Doherty doubles down on her opinion that Amber Heard is, in fact, inauthentic, which validates the outrage people feel toward her. It's really strange that Doherty spends 15 minutes validating that outrage, but at no point does she note that, according to the research, people are really fucking bad at identifying authenticity in others. In fact, just this month, researchers at Columbia University published this paper describing three studies they performed, comprising more than a thousand subjects total, finding no evidence that people can accurately identify who is authentic. They point out that people feel authenticity is extremely important when it's in other people, uh, to the point that they do, in fact, use authenticity as a criterion for conferring status, societal value, and morality judgments. And while they assume they can discern authenticity in others, they actually suck at it. Like, they can't do it. It's pathetic that Doherty completely missed the point of why, in fact, social media hates Amber Heard. Yes, people do think she's inauthentic, but it's not because of the way she dresses in court, the eye contact she makes with the jury, or the fact that she offers reasons for why she's behaved poorly in the past. It's because the female victim of domestic violence will always be seen first as a liar, as an exaggerator, as an imperfect person who somehow, if anything happened, she deserved it. Like this is the playbook. It happened to Anita Hill in 1991 when she testified that Clarence Thomas sexually harassed her. It happened to Christine Blasey Ford in 2018 uh, when she testified that Brett Kavanaugh sexually assaulted her. And how fucked up is it that the first two prominent examples I thought of involved men who went on to be confirmed to the Supreme Court of the United States? Every day, women's stories of male violence, sexual assault, and harassment are downplayed, discounted, thrown away. Hell, it even happened to me when I described a totally commonplace, low-stakes story of a man's clumsy attempt at a pass, and I was accused of exaggerating, of lying, of ruining the life of a man whose name I never even mentioned, and then I got death threats for 10 years. <laughs> 10 years. Let me tell you, it is not fun to speak openly about the bad behavior of men towards women. So is it possible Amber Heard is lying about being a victim of domestic violence? Sure, anything is possible, although it would require her to have spent several years fabric fabricating texts and photos and convincing bystanders to lie about dozens of incidents. And is it possible that Amber Heard also abused Johnny Depp? Absolutely. Women can and do enact mental and physical violence upon their male partners. And often those men are mocked and discouraged from coming forward, which is disgusting. The simple fact is that all of us here in the peanut gallery are operating with incomplete information. And so that's why if we are going to comment on this anyway, it's extremely important that you have all of the facts that you can have. 
And it's important to be very, very careful to understand what narrative you're feeding into. Like if you're going to prop up the idea that men can't be abused or that libel lawsuits are a good way to deal with someone writing about their own trauma or that we can tell if a woman is lying about domestic violence because of the clothes she wears or the way she acts. Maybe before you do that, consider the fact that um, shutting the fuck up is totally free. Unfortunately for Amber though, even Johnny's outfits feel really authentic. He's polished for sure, but he still looks like himself, including rings and sunglasses on stand. Even though these things could be interpreted in a negative light, he chooses to remain true to himself even under pressure. The essence of authenticity. Hey friends, uh, post-production Rebecca here. Uh, this the, the videos this week have been really depressing. I'm sorry. I mean, the week has been depressing, so I, I just couldn't, I couldn't come up with a fun video. So um, if you need a little pick me up feel free to head over to my alt channel it's pretty new uh, but i've got a couple of fun videos up that are you know hiking and dogs and uh just all all feel good stuff there's never going to be any depressing stuff over there that's my promise to you have a great weekend <laughs>